kind of tough to talk about because because I cried heavily. Sat down because I knew I knew the stories. Bear Paw, Montana, October 5th, 1877. Chief Joseph surrenders his rifle, his horses, his people, and ultimately, he surrenders his language. So the heartbeat of our culture is the language. Languages are expressions of relationships. Those relationships have to endure. Why do you think it's important to preserve this ancient language? Well, I think, uh, I, th I think it probably uh, gives you a better a feeling of, um, of who you are. That's my hope is it's just going to help them self-identify and give them some idea of where they come from and who they are and to be proud of that and to make them strong. At night, in the quiet firelight of the teepees, they told the old stories. Coyote is both wise and foolish, brave and cowardly. They lived in the plateau country of Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. Their lodges stood along the Clearwater, the Salmon, the Snake, the Limhi, the Grand Ronde. They hunted the Bitterroots, the Seven Devils, and the Montana Buffalo Plains. They call themselves Nimipu, the people. The Indian Wars come to an end. Give away, give away, give away. Children give board away, trains for Carlisle, Pennsylvania, 2,500 miles from home. They will be taught English and the ways of the white man. For the children, many things will change. My grandfather, uh, as I mentioned, was a native speaker uh, from the beginning. English, English was his second language. Uh, and he was a victim, if you will, of the uh, boarding schools in the early days. He was taken from this area at an early age and sent to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, which would be like traveling to the moon today, especially for a 10-year-old kid. In 1902, Elizabeth Penny travels by foot, horseback, and train from the Clearwater to Carlisle. She stays six years and prospers. Later, Elizabeth is a respected elder in the tribe and helps pull the ancient Nez Perce language back from the brink of extinction. I don't know why she ended up at Carlisle, but she took everything that was handed to her, the cards were dealt, if they were positive or negative, and was so successful and seemed so accomplished and an, an amazing woman. I really wish um, I could have met her and spoken with her and learned from her. It seems like she had a lot of wisdom to share. August 6th, 1945. 
15-year-old Haruo Aoki runs for the air raid shelter. A blinding flash erupts across the distant horizon. It isn't lightning in the clear morning sky. It's Hiroshima. Whether it was extraordinary coincidence or simply destiny that Haruo Aoki meets Elizabeth Penny Wilson, their work opens the way to help rescue the Nez Perce language. Aoki is a PhD student in linguistics at the University of California, Berkeley, when his chairman suggests he study Nez Perce Aoki has never heard of the Nez Perce tribe. He has no idea how to get to Idaho. Elizabeth Penny Wilson is a 66-year-old widow when Aoki knocks on her door and asks her to be his teacher. She tests him. Can he pronounce hohots, grizzly bear, in Nez Perce? He does it, and she says, he has good ears. I can teach him. Guided by Mrs. Wilson, Aoki quickly masters Nez Perce grammar and vocabulary. He creates a writing system. He helps the last generation of fluent speakers gather material for a Nez Perce dictionary. It takes him 34 years to complete it. I wanted to preserve the Nez Perce way of looking at things rather than European ways of looking at things translated into Nespers, then what you have is European culture given in Nespers language. People are unwittingly depending on us to, to carry on our language. Aoki contributed to that. And he gave us decades of his life. It was just a labor of love for that guy. So that's, that's pretty powerful to contemplate, you know, the amount of effort that, you know, he took out of his daily life to give to our, our people. Why is it so important that a language does not become extinct? Well, I don't know, but uh, one view is quite a bit of cultural heritage is lost when the language is lost. Then when the translation in another language is replacing it, it loses the cultural content of what was originally meant. Well, I thought I was helping preserve certain things, like um, old stories. I might, uh, I might tell just one short one here about the coyote. My own native tongue, mm -hmm. uh, the Nez Perce language. Next to me, I could not have a week to send me. Give me to my spinoia, pikunta, pikun life in Kunai Halawisi. I will kuna to ya, you forgot, toss, toss, you could say, who you could not you upon me. And when you lose those old stories, even they just may survive in translation, but uh, coyote story told in original Nespers may have lots of flavors preserved. This book, Hero Aoki's Nespers Dictionary, is so important to us. I use this book every single day. And our elders do too, and they love it. We use the book all the time. We're going through stories. We're, what's the right word for this? What's the right for that? Oh, we better ask Aoki. We better ask Aoki. So we look in the, in the dictionary. It's been very, very, very useful to us. And uh, we think of uh, Dr. Aoki as one of our special friends who's always with us, even though, uh, you know, he lives, lives in El Cerrito, California. He's here with us in spirit. Building on the work of Aoki and the elders in the 1980s, the tribe begins teaching Nez Perce to the children. 
Today, Nez Perce language and culture are taught in the local schools. Lapway, Idaho. Nez Perce people have lived here for hundreds of years. It's a small, tight-knit community that's proud of its history, its language, and the high school football team. Okay, hin ma So this is Chief Joseph, but his Indian name, hin ma is like thunder rolling on the mount mountains, okay? Sik now it, tito now it, we are I also see at some point very young people speaking as fluently. Children, you know, three, four, five years old. That would be something to see. Every summer in Chief Joseph's homeland on Wallawa Lake in Oregon, the tribe holds culture camp for young people. The children study Nez Perce language and history. And one of the teachings we try to tell them is that you were created to be strong, to be intelligent, smart, and kind people. And if you all know what you were created to be, then you live up to your creation. Listen to the old stories, once told by grandmothers and grandfathers. We're getting to the point now where language is cool, I think. They're using it in uh, outside of class, which is what has to happen. Has to get back into the home. They're texting each other in Nez Perce language. We had a student this year ask out his homecoming date in Nez Perce. Never seen that happen, it was really cool. My grandfather sat and he, you know, over the course of hours, he did recordings for us. And it was to connect with those children that he wouldn't live to meet. They play with the app, not just to learn, but it's funny to them sometimes Hot just hearing how the words said, because they know the voices on there. Hot good, man, that's real good. Today, the voices of the elders come alive again on the Nez Perce mobile app and the tribe's website. When our students go out into their real world, the benefit I think though, they're gonna have from just, even if it's just language, it's gonna tie them to their culture, to being Nez Perce and, and empower them, give them, you know, make them proud of where they come from. And that language ties them to this place. It's always gonna be with them. Boko. Him a column. Elut. Oh, I see. I got the wrong button. Waptos. That's very nice. Isn't it nice? Yeah. I'm going to say that I'm going to say that I'm going to say that I'm going to say we're all descendants of the people that fought and died here. We need to remember them and pray. And so they do, they know that their fight for survival meant something. Bear Paw, Montana. Each October, descendants of those who fell here gather to drum, to pray. <laughs> Oh, 
and to turn their hearts to the strong spirit of the ancestors. See you. 